In double knitting, there are all sorts of opportunities to make mistakes. But luckily for us, they're really easily fixed. This one is a classic. This is one pair of stitches and the colours were reversed by mistake. I put a pin on it as soon as I noticed what had happened and now let's fix it. So I'm going to slip to the position where the mistake has happened. Or you can wait till you get to that position on the following round. But if you put a pin in there, then chances are you'll remember to attend to it rather than carrying on for many rounds. So this is the offending column of knits. And if we turn it over, we can see the other side, which are pearls when we look at them from this side. And we've got a mistake on both sides, which is great. That's the easiest thing to fix. So if we let go both stitches, one from each layer, and I try to put my needle for unpicking underneath both strands so I know that I take them back at the same rate. And there's the next pair. And soon we'll be down at the mistake itself. So I need an orange one and a green one. And here are the two wrongly positioned stitches. So I'm going to pull those two out as well. Now I need to ladder that column or rebuild that column up using a crochet hook is usually the easiest. And one of the things you need to pay attention to is that you don't get the strands crossed at all. And I could push that green one to the far side. But as long as I pay attention to the sequence in which they are at the side of the work, then you're not going to put unnecessary twists in there. Especially if the colour mistake is at the edge of a colour block, you have to pay strict attention to see where the yarn should come from. And I'm just doing a straight stocking stitch fix up this side, making sure I get all of the orange ladders and once I've done that, I'm going to rest that stitch on the needle. I'm not too worried about the sequence right now. That's just a loop of yarn and when I turn it over to the other side, I should be able to pull it through to the other side. We're going to turn the work over. There's no point in struggling to do the far side fix from the opposite direction. You might as well turn it over and make it into a stocking stitch fix. And once again, I'm looking for the pieces of yarn, and that was the, the piece of yarn that was sticking through to the other side. And once again, it's a straightforward stocking stitch fix, and I'm making sure that I get the ladders in sequence. The next important thing is to make sure you put things back in the correct knit purl sequence. And that mistake is now fixed, I can remove the safety pin. Now here we have an even more interesting mistake marked with a safety pin and you might say well where's the mistake? It's a one-sided mistake and that's why you have to look at both sides fairly regularly when you're double knitting. I've worked three green stitches in succession on one of these rows. I went green knit, green purl, green knit and forgot to use the orange. So I've got a mistake on one side. So let's turn it over to that side and slip to the right position to fix it. I'm slipping my stitches until I get above that orange column. Now I've got a problem here. If I had a mistake on both sides I would be able to switch the yarns from one side to the other, but I don't. I only have a mistake on one side. So I've got a choice of two things that I can do. I, first of all, I only need to ladder back one side, so I'm just going to ladder back the orange side. And here's my problem stitch. This is the yarn that I should have used. So I'm going to pull the green out of there for a start. Now my choices are to take my orange 
and then take the, the rung of the ladder, which doesn't have enough yarn for a stitch, but I'm sure I could pull it if I wished and make a stitch out of it. It would steal some yarn from either side. Sometimes I tend not to want worry about this. I just go straight up to the row above it and rebuild the rungs of the ladder. I think that tends to show less. If you, if you have a long column of that colour, very few people are going to count that there are more stitches in this column than there are in this one. I think it shows less than pulling on that strand of yarn and making the two stitches on either side small. Now this loop of yarn will go to the other side and see if we can share that out amongst a few other stitches on the far side. We have to find where that bit of loose yarn is attached so I'm just pulling it from the other side and it seems to be attached to this stitch here. So I'm going to pull all that yarn through to the front and now rather than sharing it towards the straight line I'm going to take it further down the row and what I'm trying to do is leave a little bit of yarn, extra yarn, in each one of these stitches and I've got more space to do it if I go in this direction than if I went to the straight line and it's more likely to show at the straight line. So that takes care of it. We've got a little extra slack on this side and we've got one column of stitches. That's one row short on that side. No one's going to spot it. Here we've got another kind of mistake that's specific to these kind of quilted colour changes where one threads the back stitch through the front. So I've made a colour change there by mistake and now I have to reverse it. So once again I'm going to undo both rows at a time, two and three. But unlike a regular switched colour, I've got to bring the orange stitch back to the front and unthread those two before I rebuild them. So now it's a rebuild just like before. And again, I'm going to use the sides of the adjacent stitches to make sure I get my rungs of the ladder in the right sequence. And when you're putting the rungs of the ladder back in a stitch, try and make sure you put all the yarn into the stitch. And I'll pop it on this needle. Now I need to rebuild the other side. This is just the same as the first fix. And pull the yarn through from the front, rebuild it in sequence and pop it back on the needle. Now if I'd forgotten the colour change a row down then I could drop this back, drop both of them and release the stitches and the threaded or quilted colour change is just bringing the back stitch through the front. So I've hooked it through and now I want to carry on with orange. So if I'd forgotten how to make a quilted colour change, this is how I can make it later. Well, sometimes you forget that you're doing quilted colour changes and you do a regular one. So you have to drop it back and turn it into a quilted colour change. Now, when I quilt that stitch, my stitch that's crossing over just appears like a bar on the back. This is my yarn to make the stitch with, but it, the actual stitch I threaded my, my back stitch through just appears like a bar. And so it, it will sit there and wait for us. It's not even a loose stitch. So I just treat that as if it were a regular stitch and now I can put that back on the needle and I've put that back mounted strangely because it's going to be one of my pearls when I look at it from the other side. So armed with those techniques you should be able to fix quite a number of mistakes. The more mistakes you fix the better at it you will become.